Light is the hope to all who seek. Light is the way when moments are bleak. So look up to the skies. The light is Jesus Christ, and all who seek will find. Na 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 na. Dear friends, I, Father Matthew Ribello, along with seminarian Dion Rodriguez and seminarian Tyson Da Costa, would like to extend a very warm welcome to you all for this wisdom series lecture entitled Revisiting the Liturgical Music and Its Challenges Today. The motive of this lecture is to enlighten us about the nature of music used in the liturgical celebrations, especially in the Mass and some of the challenges that we face in this area. Any liturgical celebration is solemnized by the presence of the faithful who actively participate in the same. Lay faithful feel happy to participate in the liturgical singing even when there is a trained choir because they do not come to hear the mass and the singing but to take an active part. Hence, we shall divide our lecture in three parts. Firstly, the nature of music used for the liturgical celebration. Secondly, critical evaluation of liturgical music in our archdiocese. And thirdly, the future challenges to liturgical music in our archdiocese. Firstly, the nature of music used for liturgical celebration. I remember a person who once came to me after a solemn Eucharistic celebration and said, Wow, what a lovely Mass! The rhythm and the sound of music was overwhelming. I could not stop my feet tapping throughout the Mass. I asked him only one question. Did it help you to pray? And there was a deep silence. The motive of liturgical music is to foster praying and praising the Triune God as a community. If this goal is not met, then the singing in church turns into a performance for the tapping of the feet. Community liturgical singing helps in the growth of our faith and of community bonding. The Second Vatican Council was a pivotal moment in the history of the Church to recognize the importance of music in the liturgy and gave us some guidelines to counter the abuses that were inappropriate for liturgical celebrations. The Constitution on the Sacred Liturgy, Sacrosanctum Concilium No. 112, clearly states that sacred music is to be considered more holy in proportion as it is more closely connected with the liturgical action. Whether it adds delight to prayer, fosters unity of minds or confers greater solemnity upon the sacred rites. But the church approves of all forms of true art having the needed qualities and admits them into divine worship. Liturgical music leads the faithful into a prayerful atmosphere of the liturgy and gives the sacred text a completely new dimension to be sung. This helps the faithful to listen, to reflect and to meditate on the word of God. The sixth chapter of the constitution, Sacrosanctum Concilium and the instruction Musicam Sacram helps us to draw some parameters for the singing in the liturgical celebration. They challenge us to harmoniously blend the ceremonial, the ministries and the music and invite us to magnify the Paschal mysteries 
and move the minds of the faithful to contemplation, especially in vivifying the most solemn celebration of the Eucharist. It also reminds us that the Church acknowledges the Gregorian chant as being specially suited to the Roman liturgy. Therefore, it should be given pride of place in liturgical services. Polyphonic music can be included provided it accords to the spirit of liturgy. Lastly, it tells us that the pipe organ is to be held in high esteem for it is the traditional musical instrument which adds a wonderful splendor to the church's ceremonies and powerfully lifts up man's mind to God and to higher things. Emeritus Pope Benedict XVI writes in the book Joseph Ratzinger Collected Works, Volume 2, Theology of the Liturgy. I quote, In the Eucharist, a communion takes place that corresponds to the union of man and woman in marriage. Just as they become one flesh, so in communion, we all become one spirit, one person with Christ. The singing of the church comes ultimately out of that love. It is the utter depth of love that produces singing. Cantare amantis est, says Saint Augustine. Singing is a lover's thing. In short, Emeritus Pope Benedict XVI wants to convey that singing is an expression of love in and of the liturgy that helps to unite the faithful as one community in Christ Jesus. If we can assimilate the authentic spirit of the liturgy, we will also be capable of understanding the true patrimony of liturgy, that is, sacred music. In other words, to recognize that music alone has the right within the liturgical right because it is consistent with its authentic spirit. Secondly, Critical Evaluation of Liturgical Music in our Archdiocese After having had a bird's eye view on what is liturgical music in the teachings of the Church and also a brief understanding on the theology of liturgical music, let us now critically evaluate the liturgical music in our Archdiocese of Goa and Daman with the help of a few examples. First, singing or reciting of the responsorial psalm after the first reading. The general instruction to the Roman Missal reminds us that the responsorial psalm should correspond to each reading and should customarily be taken from the lectionary and be sung at least as far as the people's response is concerned. However, it has been noticed that we tend to choose a hymn which does not even match the readings. Especially on feast days and Sundays, we tend to select a hymn from Gaina Chujelo in the B series, for example, Devatsu Soptu or Amchilagi Dev Uloila, which is liturgically inappropriate. Second, the coordination of the liturgical singing with the celebrant of the Mass. The hymns chosen for the Mass have to correspond to the theme of the liturgy, which is based on the readings of the day or the festive occasion. This responsibility is normally given to the leader of the singing or the choir. Unfortunately, the liturgy and the singing go on parallel or in opposite lines with the singing by the choir often become, becoming a performance. Musicam Sakram states that in selecting the kind of music for the liturgical celebration, the choir must keep in mind that singing should not hinder the active participation of the people and it should correspond to the spirit of the liturgical celebration. The church does not forbid the choirs but their function is to animate 
the liturgic liturgy and lead the congregation in singing however choirs whether parish or professional seem to behave as if they are not part of congregation with regard to their placement in the church having a special dress code etc making most of the congregation to be a silent listeners or spectators third the singing of approved hymns the archdiocese is blessed with the gayanant jello and the devacha burganchi gita which obtain numerous hymns and melodies that are approved for liturgical singing however some choirs compose and sing unapproved melodies which is common during nuptial masses and so called healing masses fourth the proper use of the instruments in the latin church the pipe organ is to be held in high esteem the documents of the church also state that other instruments also may be admitted for use in divine worship with the knowledge and consent of the competent territorial authority for this reason the diocesan commission for sacred music in the year 1995 issued a circular for our archdiocese which is published on volume 20 of devacha burganchi gita the document and the circular clearly state use of musical instrument is to accompany the singing render participation easier and achieve a deeper union in the assembly and percussions whether manual or automatic should not be used since most of our keyboard players find it difficult to play bass beat with the left hand a bass guitar could be used in place of percussion automatic beat the circular of our archdiocese further states that electronic keyboard can be used with the following effect only strings church organ clarinet and flute and the other effects should be avoided at times we also find unapproved real instruments like mandolin and recorder being played during mass which should be avoided fifth chanting the psalms and the canticle for the vespers the document musicam sacram also reminds us that it is desirable that at least some part of the divine office especially principal hours namely lords and vespers should be performed in sung form by these people at least on sundays and feast days in our parishes on the occasion of solemnity or feast vespers are solemnly celebrated on the previous evening however instead of chanting the psalms and the canticle inappropriate hymns from the gayanuj jello are sung we could train the choir and the congregation to intone the psalms and the canticle at least in rakta ton which means chanting on one note only we could have given more examples but due to lack of time these will suffice thirdly the future challenges to liturgical music in our archdiocese liturgical music in our archdiocese seems to face three future challenges namely over emphasis on music traditional music versus contemporary music and latin language still alive not extinct a the over emphasis on music for sundays and especially for feast days it seems fashionable to have specially trained choir sometimes musicians even from outside the parish are invited to accompany the choir so that the performance is excellent sometimes these musicians 
are not accustomed to play liturgical music. Hence, they naturally tend to play jazz style accompaniment to the hymns. When we give overemphasis to the musical part of the celebration, we lose the very purpose of the liturgical celebration. Music is important in and for the liturgical celebration, but it is always at the service of the liturgical celebration. B. Traditional music versus contemporary music. Gregorian chant is uniquely the church's own traditional music. This type of music was composed to reflect the character of the text as well as to fit the stresses and rhythmic patterns of spoken language. Chant is a living connection with our ancestors in faith, the traditional music of the Roman Rite, a sign of communion with the Universal Church, a bond of unity across cultures, a means for diverse communities to participate together in song and summons to contemplative participation in the liturgy. Perhaps because of the language in the Gregorian chant and the youngsters being accustomed to the jazz, pop, rap, etc., Gregorian chant may not be appealing to them. However, tradition of the church cannot be broken and replaced by any other type of contemporary music. For example, I cannot adapt a popular music of Simon and Garfunkel called Sound of Silence to Amcha Baba or Our Father or even the use of traditional Mando music tune to compose a liturgical hymn. C. Latin language still alive, not extinct. A language can be called living language if someone speaks it as a mode of communication. It can also be called alive if it is studied and used as a literary text. For example, Latin terms are mostly found in science, medicine and in the documents of the Catholic Church. Although vernacular has become the language of the liturgical celebration, the Latin language is not dead to the Roman Catholic Church. Sacrosanctum Concilium number 36 reminds us particular law remaining in force the use of the Latin language is to be preserved in the Latin rite and Sacrosanctum Concilium number 54 reminds us that required steps be taken enabling the faithful to say or sing together in Latin those parts of the ordinary of the mass belonging to them, like Kyrie, Gloria, Sanctus, Agnus Dei, and also Pater Noster. One should not be anti-Latin, but make use of it in the liturgical singing as far as possible. Otherwise, we will make it extinct. Dear friends, liturgical music cannot be substituted by any other music during the celebration of the sacred mysteries of our faith because liturgical music has the characteristics of holiness, goodness and universality. It helps us to translate the authentic liturgical spirit into notes, melodies and songs. Liturgical music directs us to the worship of the celebrated mystery, fostering an authentic and integral participation, helping in a way to grasp the sacred. Many parishes, priests and choirs in Goa do follow these norms laid down by the Magisterium and the Archdiocese in order to foster a greater devotion and an active participation of the faithful in the liturgy through singing. A humble request is to study and sing the hymns from the Gayana Chajelo and the Devacha Burganchi Gita. The Archdiocese has a committee 
for the formation in liturgical music which organizes dinary wise formation programs in liturgical music it would be advisable that the church choir masters the leaders of choir choir members and those interested in liturgical music to attend these programs which we hope to begin after this covid-19 situation in this way let us help each other to make our liturgical celebration more meaningful more powerful and more participative by means of the liturgical music thank you and god bless you my dear friends we have just participated in the last lecture of the wisdom Re reflection series lucius secut luminari we began in the month of september and this was the 14th lecture at this moment in the name of the seminary community i would like to express my sincere gratitude and thanks first and foremost to mr robin de souza of the ccr tv and mr samiro denise and his team for recording and telecasting these lectures i would like to appreciate and thank reverend father barry cardozo the director of our dyson center for social communication media for his support and guidance i would like to sincerely appreciate and thank father agnello pinero one of our staff members who took the initiative to organize this series of lectures together with a team of seminarians who did the necessary editing seminarian melito de costa seminarian ruel fernandez seminarian warren pereira seminarian karen cardozo and seminarian peter gonzalves surely the lecturers who deliver the lectures require appreciation and thanks they did a lot of research they did a lot of study and they delivered the lectures for us last but not the least my dear viewers y'all watched our lectures y'all listened to our lectures y'all appreciated our lectures and therefore a hearty thanks and a word of appreciation to you all we hope and pray that we will come back with more lectures in the future and therefore we would request you all to send us your valuable comments and suggestions once again a hearty thank you to each and every one may god bless rashol seminary and may god bless us all mm -hmm.